Panda Gamer here for another exciting episode of Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. So we're going to go load from the last turnabout 1-2, the trial. And we're going to go from the chapter start. September 8th, 11.43 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. A amnesia? I can't, I can't believe my lawyer is trying to defend me in such a state. I, I, uh... Why didn't you tell me, sir? I don't know, because I didn't think you'd understand. I'm so sorry I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head in a little. A market cook should be all you need. Uh, no, no, no. I think I'll pass on this one. Come on! Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We can just attach the car battery to your nipples. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Uh, okay. Of course! I'd be honored to. Ah, uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name, and then I can tell you about me. No, no, that's okay, really. I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So, my name is Phoenix Wright. What a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember? I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back, and maybe it'll help. This is... A business card? I got it from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay. There are some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Okay. So I have my business card now. Sweet. I should call this. give this guy a call. I guess for now, we should stop talking about me and start talking, or, yeah, talking about this case. This case? Yup. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with the cell phone, but cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Uh, hurry up and tell me, this might be very important. Okay, Roger. <laughs> okay. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. That sounds familiar. Phone. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is it this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. Okay... I don't know what that means. We agreed to meet up at 6pm. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up, but they never did. Hmm... So, where is the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is it the phone in my pocket? You, you mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up... Ah! You were all along! You're so mean! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up! And when I went to check in in the courtroom, everyone had already left! Uh... Ah! Now who in the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And a good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Is there a word for worse than ab <laughs> abysmal? <laughs> oh, and what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra decisive super important evidence. Here you are, Nick, the thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this? A list? It has about 20 people's name and phone numbers written on it. 
It was kind of tough, but I managed to find out some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in... There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Names list added to the court record. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me. Hmm. And where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Why are you asking that? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, is that right? These numbers were in the memory of the phone that Maggie found. Hmm, so that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. Um, Maya? Actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops, guess you have to get going. We can talk about it later. You being... <laughs> about you being old later, Nick. Well, wish us luck. Oh, we're gonna need more than luck. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Yeah. So yeah, for those of you who don't know from the first game, that's our, actually our assistant. She's a psychic. Her sister was our psychic, and then she died. Or our assistant, and then she died. But since Maya is a channeler of spirits, she can sometimes call on the spirits, and we can talk to her sister, Mia. The court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So I ask that the court might be a little lenient on. <laughs> what an idiot. There is no need to prove a, give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls its next witness... A drifter who has taken a walk, who, who was taking a walk uh, in the park on the day of the murder. Okay. Oh, okay, that guy looks familiar. Please state your name for the court witness. Before I do, I'd like to be clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, alright, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who is taking a walk. D did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me a university student. Oh crap. But would that do. Uh, what? Why is he reading so fast? But everything in my life is top quality, you understand? I am merely looking for the perfect top notch, unbeatable university, don't you see? I have a rigorous selection process and took it to walk as. Yes, yes, I understand. I am very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. Well, what is he? A human chatterbox? Ugh. I have to question him? <laughs> oh, wow. That is some sexy ass hair. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates don't even need to apply. Glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. <laughs> oh my god. That's enough. Your name, witness. <laughs> what a tool. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down? I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. All right, I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso, with a PhD in drifting, as it were. Dick Wellington? Dick <laughs> Wellington. If you wanted to... You you could call me a university student in transit. Ahem. Mr. Wellington. Dick Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a er, stroll through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I am in no way a prepubescent pre pre boy out on a walk with mummy. If you must know, I am... Anyway, please testify to the court what you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again, taking a walk. You know you... 
Shut the fuck up, Dick. What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. Okay, what I saw that day. Let's see here. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pre that pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. It wasn't a banana, you dumb fuck. Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes, and if she really is innocent, then, that's, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. Dick Wellington. You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. See, and at this point, he pretty much is understanding what's going on. Okay, guys, cross-examination time. Alrighty. So, first up, I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. Hold it. What is your life situation? So, you were at the park all afternoon. You seem to have a lot of free time. It's because he's a hipster. That was very rude of you, but then again, I, what can I expect? That's what you get from a man who graduated from a no-name, trashy university. No-name? Trashy? Now, this might be hard for a mush-headed, feeble-minded baboon like you, but I have to think very carefully about the future of our great country. But I thought you said you were thinking about which college to go to just now. Oh, please. Which university I go to will directly affect the fairy future of this country. That arrogant little snot. Dick Wellington. Okay, anyway, that was useless. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls... Well, let's check this first. Let's see if he says anything about... Okay, come on. No! see if he says anything about time because they, they said it was exactly 6 p.m. how did you know what time it was I see you're not wearing a watch so Ugh. come on is that the best you can do do you think you can discredit me like that you're just a third-rate biased fool I guess I can't expect real smarts from you Grr, his arrogance is really intolerable so what should I do now? Fucking press that shit harder. Answer the question. How did you know what time it was? Oh my god, I cannot stand these freaking animations sometimes. Tsk, tsk. I can't believe I have to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desks and point at people for fun. <laughs> I guess I don't have a choice. I'll try to explain it so that even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. There was the little thing they call a clock at the park. Did you get that? Did you... Do you know what a clock is? It's a thing that tells you the time. As you can see, Mr. Wright, it's evident even in the picture of the crime scene. Oh, so it is. Ugh. I looked at the clock, and that's how I knew the time. But if you ask me, this whole concept of breaking time and it's total nonsense in man's fallow. A real first class person should live by the plenty of time and where to watch? Ha! What a ridiculous notion. People should live freely without constraints. This is life should be. <laughs> and yet again, another flood of meaningless words. Talk about a first class waste of time. In any case... <laughs> okay, so that was useless. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from right my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. Press that shit. The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas. Now, what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? <laughs> 
Oh god, what an idiot. What a freaking moron. And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really true. I can never mention it. <laughs> okay, stop it, stop it. I know. That's it, Nick. He's gotta be lying about the bananas. Okay, I really didn't think that would be it, but okay, fine. Sometimes it's just so stupid. Oh, but I can say objection now. Okay, shut up. <sighs> yes, I get it. Oh my god. Please just freaking let me freaking do it. Okay. Oh my god, I, I get it. I freaking get it. Oh my god. This is insane. I don't care. I'm sorry I'm not reading this. This is stupid. They're over explaining a lie. She's got a sharp mind, but I just wish I could remember who she is. Is everything okay, Nick? Okay. Anyway, I gotta go through this shit again. Bananas, bananas. There we go. Present. I present to you the baseball glove. Aw, oh, yeah.